I am up really early because some ingredients you just have to get as fresh as possible. And I have an example of that just here. <laughs> I'm not going to be eating pesto from a jar. What I am looking for is some dandelion, some sorrel and some wild garlic so that we can make some meadow pesto. So come with me and let's see what we can find. Now, it's relatively easy to find the dandelions. Their seed heads give them away. Later in the day, their lovely yellow flowers will open as well, and it's a bit warmer. What we're looking for are the leaves. So if I just have a look in here, here we go. Packed with good things, vitamins and minerals. I did write them down, but I think I've got it now. Calcium, manganese, potassium, folate, iron, uh, loads of vitamins too. The acronym CAKE helps me remember, C, A, K and E. And there's B6 as well in here. So much that I think, maybe psychologically, but you can taste it. There's a bitter freshness to that that I think will work so well in our meadow pesto. I think in perfect combination, in fact, with the sorrel, which has a more vinegary, sour taste. So. Let's go and see if we can find some of that. Now, at this time of year, the sorrel flowers are not uh, in bloom, they're not showing, and the leaves are buried deep in the undergrowth, so it's not the easiest uh, to find. But if you have a rummage around, then you can find the odd leaf. Here's one. Now, this. <laughs> It's not, it's looking a little bit worse for wear, it's got some holes in it. Shows how tasty it is. Um, now this is a little bit of a lightweight in comparison to the dandelion in terms of nutrition anyway. Um, it's got lots of vitamin C in it and some beta carotoid I think it is, which the body converts to vitamin A. Um, and its flavour is very different. Really sharp, like a bit, a bit like a vinegar. Um, and I think that's really going to add something special to the meadow pesto. Gathering it is going to take a little bit longer because of uh, how difficult it is to find. So that is the challenge for the next hour or so. Now, pestos typically have pine nuts and olive oil in them, but I would like to try something a little bit more temperate, a little bit more native to more northern countries. May I introduce the walnut tree? It is an amazing tree, just for its form, colour, it's almost soft, but it produces a beautiful nut and a nut that can be converted into a very useful and delicious cooking oil as well. Now this tree, it's a bit early in the season for nuts for a start, <laughs> um, but it's also a bit young to produce that many. So, for those of us that don't have access to a fully mature walnut tree, you can forage in your local shop <laughs> for walnut halves and the walnut oil. I encourage everyone really to try and switch to nuts and to uh, nut-based oils as much as possible because they're so much better for the environment. The alternative are things like vegetable oils, sunflower oils that are based on annual crops and so each year chemicals and fertilizers are, are applied, the soil is ripped up. Imagine if in place of all those fields we just had forests of walnut trees that we could walk under and enjoy. That's my dream anyway. So, now that I have foraged for the walnuts, let's go and see if we can find some wild garlic. Now, where I can use a wild alternative, I'm always going to try. And here, this beautiful white-headed flower is an example of something that could be used in so many of our traditional dishes. 
It's wild garlic or ramsons, and surprise, surprise, it's a substitute for garlic. I am, I shouldn't be, but I'm always surprised at just how how garlicky that taste is. The bulbs and roots even more so, but the leaves have a hint of it, a very subtle flavour of garlic, which I think is going to work so well in our meadow pesto. Now, wild garlic, also known as ramsons, is really important in our cultural heritage, I think. Um, we can tell that from the fact that people named places after it. So in Lancashire, you have Ram's Bottom, a very noisy little bird. <laughs> you have Ram's Bottom, which means Valley of Ramsons. Um, and just around here in Cambridgeshire, there's a place called Ramsey, which is Island of the Ramsons, because um, this all used to be marshland with the odd little hillock where people lived and wild garlic grew. So, so nice to kind of forage for and use something that has been part of our culinary history for so long. So let's get harvesting and then it's to the kitchen. As you can tell the sun is a little higher in the sky now and I've been foraging for the last couple of hours and here before you I have the ingredients. So this is the wild garlic, the dandelion and the sorrel. And I tell you what I really enjoyed foraging for the sorrel because it's a bit of a shy one and you have to get right in amongst the grasses, pop them in your mouth as you continue searching um, and after a while you begin to realise it's everywhere but it's just so low down in amongst the grass stems. So that was a very therapeutic and kind of meditative experience. And then we have the walnuts from Tesco, uh, so that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and here the olive oil. Now, I did want to use walnut oil, but they didn't have any in the shop. And that is why we need to start buying it, to create the demand. Because if the demand is there, people will make it and prices come down. But for the time being, olive oil will do just fine. Now, it turns out I wasn't the only one foraging this morning. Just as I finished, I saw a lovely barn owl hover and swoop before diving down into the grasses. Presumably finding a little snack, but my money is on the fact that it wasn't sorrel. So, after drying the herbage in the sun, we are ready to blitz and make some pesto. Now this is quite a quick process not like the picking. Now first of all I'm going to put the dandelion, I'll leave the flower out, the dandelion, wild garlic and the sorrel into the whizzer. Now it feels like quite a lot, there's 30 grams of each here, but in actual fact when this gets blitzed it will reduce to very little um, and I'm not sure how many portions I will make, maybe two or something like that if I'm lucky. Um, Parmesan, I've been forgetting to mention that until now. I'm putting 30 grams of each leaf in, 30 grams of Parmesan, and also 30 grams of lightly roasted walnuts. A little bit of warm water, not very much at all. Three tablespoons, and then I think it's about three or four tablespoons of olive oil, but you know, you can be fairly imprecise with olive oil. Just glug it in. A little bit of salt just to flavour. I prefer sea salt, but this is rock salt. I'm sure it'll be fine. Just might leave it a bit grainy within. And some freshly ground black pepper. Ooh, looks good. That's working, that's working. My That is looking like pesto. It's the right colour at least. Let's give it a little bit more. Okay, here we go. Now, um, here's the pasta, and I'm gonna put that uh, with a little bit of the reserved cooking water into this ice cream container. Because when I worked as a cook in a pasta restaurant, this was one of the most useful uh, tools that we had. I'm just looking around for its lid, it's still over there. 
One second. Yes, one of the most useful tools that we had. So now that I've got the pasta uh, with its water in there, I'm going to take a serving of the delicious pesto. There we go. Oh dear, I'm so unprepared. I have also forgotten the cream. One second. And back again. Now, um, some people say no, no, no to cream, and I'm actually probably one of them. Um, but I just thought I'd follow this uh, because it is what I used to cook way back when in the restaurant, and it was just a little bit, not much at all, just a little bit, and that all helps to loosen everything as well. Now, that is in the pot or in the box, lid on top. Leaking. Okay, and that just mixes it all in nicely and you can then put it into the bowl okay there we go ready for the taste test okay i am so excited about this one i love pesto um, and just collecting the leaves spending quite a lot of time in the creation of it um, I don't know, it leaves me a bit nervous. Let's see. Meadow pesto. Please be good. It's really good. It's really, really good. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I'm so happy. Um, perhaps I put in a bit too much salt because there was salt in the pasta water um, and I put some salt in the pesto. Um, so I, it's a bit salty. But the, the herbs are so tasty, fresh as you like, very, very pleasant. Um, the cheese, I suppose, and the, that tiny little bit of cream, um, and the herbs are like really mixing together well. I am so, so pleased with that. A bigger portion tonight with bacon and mushrooms. Mm. 